Well, good morning. Uh, haven't done a video in a while, just uh, been buried at work. We're uh, getting a bunch of, uh, oh, my entire team is heading on the road to present a bunch of content in Europe, uh, Asia, uh, and then uh, Australia and India. I'm on the uh, Australia India leg. And so long nights haven't been uh, able to get to the backlog of uh, projects that I have. So uh, what I wanted to do was to try and get a couple of videos in before I head out to India uh, in a week or two and uh, uh, work through some of this backlog. So the first thing that uh, I wanted to do today was just to uh, do a quick video uh, on uh, X, Y, and Z uh, axis on uh, uh, these uh, analog scopes. Now I picked up uh, these two uh, Tektronix uh, 2235A scopes. In fact, you know, this one's uh, a standard one. And then if we swing over here, you'll see uh, this guy is actually the, let me zoom in so maybe you can get a better view of that. This guy is actually a AN uh, USM 488, so that'll be a, uh, uh, a military version of uh, the scope here. Um, these I, I picked up, and the reason I picked these up was that uh, uh, I have a piece of kit which is uh, an 8340B. I've done a video on this. Uh, that is a, uh, uh, a 26 and a half gigahertz sweep that goes from about 10 meg to 26 and a half gig. And as part of the uh, adjustment uh, procedure for it uh, and getting it uh, working, you're supposed to actually uh, look at the signal coming out of a crystal detector attached to the, the front of the, attached to the output of the uh, unit. And then you're supposed to use um, uh, the sweep and the uh, Z axis outputs for the unit to position markers and determine frequencies. And uh, I tried initially to do that just using the, uh, uh, the digital scopes that I had here. So I have a, a, a Rigol and then I have a, uh, a Hewlett Packard or an Agilent uh, 54845A, which is a one and a half gigahertz, eight giga sample uh, scope. And uh, the Rigol doesn't have XY at all. And the, uh, oh, sorry, has XY, doesn't have XYZ at all. And the um, 54845 uh, does have, a, uh, it's supposed to have a Z axis thing, but I, it didn't really seem to, to work. And so I went out and I acquired a, another scope, uh, which was a, a Hewlett Packard uh, 54622. Uh, and it's a, a nice little scope, we'll do a video on it. Um, you know, and it uh, uh, has the ability to do uh, XYZ. But what it actually does on the Z channel is it just simply implements the blanking aspect. So how Z supposed to work if we look at like the sine wave here, and let me uh, zoom that out a little bit. What uh, you'll see is this is a, a you know, 5 volt peak to peak uh, value here. And when you have uh, the voltage being positive, you'll drive, uh, you'll start decreasing, you'll drive the, uh, the Z axis amplifier and you'll decrease the intensity of the beam uh, that's in the positive when the, the z-axis is positive and then when the z-axis is negative you'll increase the intensity and so the aim of this was that uh, you could do blanking which is when you would turn on uh, you know very you know the, the, the positive part of the pulse on the z-axis amplifier and that would basically turn off the trace here and then you could turn it back on again. And that's uh, useful, for example, in XY when you're sweeping, you know, if you've got a circle. In fact, let's, uh, I have this set up so we can do XY. So let's just show the XY. When you've got, you know, an XY value and you say you don't care about the other half because that's actually really the sweeper, the signal generator, the device on the test returning back to its start. So you only want to see the part of the sweep or the first part of the, the signal. So you blank the other half and it doesn't confuse the, the system. The other thing you can do is with the negative voltage, you can drive intensity. And as your intensity gets very uh, point-like and very short pulse, you effectively bring a marker, a, a high intensity point on your signal and you can move that item around because all of the signals should be correlated in time. So let's go and take a look at what that would look like on these scopes. And you can see they're basically identical. Um, but let's just zoom in and, and look at this. Now what I'm going to go do here uh, is I have uh, my Rigol uh, bench, little bench uh, signal generator putting out a one kilohertz 
a wave and we can see that and then over here I have uh, my 8116 uh, pulse function generator and you can see it's morning so the drink of the morning choice is uh, a Bloody Mary if you haven't tried uh, Dimitri's uh, Bloody Mary mix I highly recommend it um, and now this guy's going to, I'm going to have this guy turned on and what we'll do is we'll put out uh, a, a little pulse here and we'll see the action on the screen so if we set the pulse and we go back over here now and let's just zoom in now hopefully you'll be able to see this let's zoom in a little bit more we'll turn the intensity down a bit you know and so you should see if we turn that up you'll see the the little space that's actually appearing and it's driving around there and so let's see if I can turn the change the frequency here a little bit you know and there we go so you should see now that gap now what's happening there if we take a look at the actual signal that's coming out of my uh, out of the the signal generator here and let's go and drop it into this guy what you'll see if we zoom right in and you can't really see it here uh, but there's right just there there's a little pulse that's occurring and let's see if I can get uh, delay mode is one of the cool aspects of this so let's see there we go this is actually uh, interesting if you look at the you may not be able to notice let's turn down the brightness there you can see the, the little bright part this is the delayed sweep function in the the two two three A's. Uh, in fact, uh, I think all of a lot of the Tektronics of this era had this delayed sweep, and so you can just simply go and uh, look at different parts of your signal by simply delaying the time, and you'll see that you know the little highlight jumps from point to point. Down here, we can see it's a little pulse uh, coming in, and that's what's uh, going on. So if we put this back. If we put this back to our uh, signal generator, you know, and then fill that in. Let's go back to A mode there. Let's step that back to one. Get rid of our delay, you know. And now I reconnect that pulse up. Again, now you'll see that little thing. Now, if you notice when I take the, the signal off you'll see the intensity drop and the gap disappears now the reason for that is is as we looked at the actual pulse signal you know we're driving most of the pulse uh, as negative and then let me get that locked in there we go and we're just simply getting a very short positive pulse that will blank the the signal you know if I come in and set it back to a sine wave now you'll see a, 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 a more uh, fluctuating intensity level on the aspect here. So if I go in and just return that here, and then let's go and set it on XY. Uh, and let's set the frequency of this to be... There we go. Now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing that uh, signal come around. Now, the reason you've seen that is that this, uh, while this is a very good pulse generator in terms of the creation of the pulse uh, and some of the function stuff, it's not uh, a great um, uh, crystal oscillator in it. So it's not really aligned very well to the 10 meg uh, signal. So if I take it off here and actually put this on one of my uh, devices that has a uh, the 10 meg reference, we can now actually see a better indication of what's happening in the Z. Uh, you can see that as we start going negative, the trace progressively gets brighter until we've got you know, almost full brightness, and this is about as intense as it can get, and then it starts dropping off again. And you know, if we turn off the output, you'll see, you know, here's the, the, the XY, and that intensity comes in. So as you drive that external 
uh, input, you'll see the, uh, uh, the, the intensity come up. And now on the 8340B, that's what I was uh, uh, looking for. I have a crystal detector, and on the uh, x-axis, I'll have the sweep time, uh, which is the signal that comes out. It's basically a ramp with a few, basically a ramp with a few flat spots as it goes through its sweep from 10 meg to 26. The crystal detector will give me the output level uh, that's coming out of the, the device. And then I can use its, X, its uh, z-axis output to put a marker on here. And so as I see the, the signal and I adjust the output uh, of the oscillator, I can get high points on that signal and then use the marker functions inside the sweeper to come back and find, uh, that, find that peak and get the actual signal, the, the frequency value on that. Um, so that's one of the advantages of having these old analog scopes where they actually really do uh, use the X, Y, uh, and the, the Z axis properly. Uh, and I tried uh, some of the newer ones. I tried some of the TDS things that have uh, the digital phosphor uh, aspect and utilizing the X, Y, uh, Z axis there, but they just really don't give you this gradiated response that uh, uh, you expect from uh, these uh, old analog uh, uh, scopes. And that's why I, I bought these. And you know, if we come back and just take a quick look again at the the two scopes, uh, there's uh, been a bit of a thread on uh, uh, the EV block about you know getting scopes and whether they're uh, good or valuable or should you get an analog scope or or not. Um, I got both of these from uh, eBay for just under a hundred dollars, um, and the reason I I think nobody else wanted to get in on them was uh, if we take a look, you'll see that there's these little red tags and uh, these were owned by the FAA at one point and they were rejected by the FAA's uh, calibration people as not uh, being in spec and specifically the, the spec that they were out was uh, uh, amp vertical amplitude at a particular frequency. Now I don't know when they did this if they actually uh, checked for, you know, they, there's a, an ability to set the vertical gain on these uh, uh, oscilloscopes and now I don't know whether the calibration lab just did a check and said nope they don't match reject or if they did a check and adjustment and ran out of adjustment space to be able to make the uh, uh, the make the the scopes come into uh, into spec so in another video we'll go in and we'll actually see if we can adjust uh, the vertical uh, calibration which was the thing that they kicked out on these these tags um, and then we'll uh, uh, if we can adjust them then we'll check across a bit of the range now I'm not terribly worried about that because I actually have a bunch of other scopes which are accurate and I really only needed this for the Z axis plus you know realistically an oscilloscope is telling you more information about you know the, the shape of the wave uh, form that you're looking at rather than highly accurate um, uh, values like this the spec on uh, these guys for uh, vertical deflection sensitivity um, is something like three percent, or it's two percent tolerance on the, the scope. You know, so you know if you've got uh, a, you know a one volt peak to peak signal, you're going to have two percent uh, incorrectness, and then you're going to have some inaccuracy in terms of the uh, the width of the trace and so on as you're trying to work it. So realistically, you're really using a oscilloscope to get some basic information about the waveform and get in a feel for what it's doing and how it looks like, rather than utilizing this to take you know very accurate measurements. So being out of tolerance a little bit is not uh, really a problem if you're looking as a beginner to grab uh, a cheap scope. Uh, I'm going to take this, see if we can get them into tolerance, and then I'll sell uh, one of these on uh, eBay and uh, keep the other one to... Uh, um, uh, keep the other one to use uh, with my 8340B as I calibrate it. And if I ever need to go back, uh, I have something to use the Z-axis. Anyway, uh, I hope you found that uh, little rambling uh, discussion of uh, XYZ mode on uh, uh, analog uh, oscilloscopes uh, interesting. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the uh, next video. Catch you later. Bye.